Sometimes when you're gaming, you just get those days where you're just on fire. You're, you're hitting your rotations all the time. You're a scoring machine. Whatever the metric is in the game that you're playing, you're just on. But for some people, those days, it's, it's just not enough. In the last month or so, I've been noticing this trend in Rocket League, and it mirrors a lot of MMO trends I've seen for years. The game begins, our team is just blowing the doors off the other team. The, the other team has even scored a point, the win is inevitable, or at least it looks like it. Then the other team scores a point. Then players in the winning team start to leave. They just rage quit the match, and this is completely counterintuitive to gamer logic, because well, the win is insured, so why leave? Now at first I thought this was just bad timing, a network spike, a disconnect, I mean that happens. But in this instance, the entire other team rage quit simultaneously. That can't be a local disconnect. This was an intentional act. So, what, what's, what's going on here? Because, you know, this goes against everything in the gamer credo, because you've got the victory sewn up, right? And the gamer credo is you go for the W, and you just hang out for the rest of the game, and then afterwards you say GG, and you move on with your life, and everything's cool, but that's not what's happening here. You know, I, I've talked about rage quitting before, and um, this, is, this is on a whole other level than that, because you have to do more than just win. Okay, let's back up. In the Rage Quit show, I touched on this idea that Rage Quitters are leaving games because they think their time is more important, and they don't want to waste it with a bunch of insert slur of the week here players. This explains why you would leave a losing effort, yeah, but why would you leave a winning effort? And I guess one of the answers comes from when people leave this winning effort. Players don't leave a close match. If it's a back and forth match, everyone's going to stick it out to the end. Usually. The win quit comes when a match is basically a shutout and the other team scores one token point on the board. And even if there's only a few seconds on the clock and the game is basically over, they leave. So what this tells me is it can't just be a win. It has to be a dominating win. It has to be the perfect win. Any flaw taints that win somehow and it's not worthy of being played out. You know, alternatively, I've seen matches where the losing team will stick it out not to win but to mar that perfect victory. A last second goal, it's meaningless to the score, but it's celebrated like it won the game because opponents know it gets under the winner's skin. Or they'll start to do stuff like own goaling just to make the perfect win seem less perfect. You know about this fetish I keep on talking about, this fetish for winning that people have? There's also this fetish for the perfect win, the dominating win. You have to either win by dominating them or you have to win by a close call. There, there is no in-between. Unless, of course, you're on the losing side of that, at which point you complain about the other team just running the score, but that's another story entirely. It's easy to see that in a game like Rocket League, League of Legends, Smite. You know, games that have a scoreboard, or you can look up at it and see how well one team is doing over the other. But what about MMOs? What about single-player games? Well, it does happen there, too. Uh, one of the oddest things I've ever seen in an MMO, people leave groups because the group isn't winning fast enough, or they personally weren't dominating enough. The effect, of course, is when they leave, the entire group falls apart because, you know, like, one-fifth of the team just left. I've even seen small groups fall apart because one person made a single mistake. Something minor, something recoverable, but it ruins the perfection, so gone. Now, in single player, okay, well, if you're doing, like, a one-life challenge run, then, yeah, resetting is kind of understandable. It's part of the challenge. I get that. That's different. And you're not really robbing anyone else of a fun time. I mean, that's playing on your own, where people can't rate or compare your efforts to... Well, do I really want to do this at this point? It's such pop psychology. You know what? Hell with it. Let's just do it. The Dunning-Kruger effect. It's going to be amazing to watch the metrics on this. I get to see how many people rage quit right at that timestamp. It's going to be incredible. Throwing Dunning-Kruger out there, it's, it's like throwing Godwin's Law out there because it's an instant dismissive argument. But if you stuck with me through that, hear me out. To really paraphrase this idea, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a paradox. You have to be really good at something to know how really bad you are at it. How many people do you know that say, well, yeah, I'm a really good driver, and you're terrified to ride with them? People who are really bad at something tend to way overestimate their skill, and people who are really good at something tend to really underestimate their skill. Or, to put it in the way that makes people leave videos that bring it up like this, stupid people are too stupid to know they're stupid. Okay, that's not really true because the Dunning-Kruger study looked at competence and not intelligence, but that, that doesn't get the hate watch clicks that calling people stupid does, so there you are. 
Well, let me bring a couple other things into play here. From the Rage Quit video, games build you up to be the most important sentient being in the universe. The universe will, in fact, wait for you to go buy ammo before setting off the timer on the Doomsday device. Game design basically reinforces how utterly awesome you are, even if you're not. This illusion is a pretty powerful one, and it's something that a lot of people don't like to have broken. And I want to hit up a couple more points here, too. Um, I brought this up before. If a match is close, people are more tolerant to mistakes. But when you look at that through the perfection filter, it makes sense. Obviously, matchmaking has pitted them against equal opponents, and they're playing to the top of their ability, and, okay, mistakes happen on both sides, that makes sense. So a miscue here, that, that's fine, that's expected. It's when the game is unequal that you start having issues. This works a little differently in MMOs, because well, if a group is about equal in DPS or heals or whatever, people are more tolerant to mistakes. It's usually when the top DPS is way over-leveling an instance or someone who thinks they should be better is not dominating that the complaining starts to begin. I remember this one LFG Dragon Soul raid one time. One of the DPSers was virtually yelling at the group that he ran eight tunes a week through this, and how slow we were, and how we should all know the fight, and how it goes, and do that, blah, 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 blah. And shortly after that, he declared us all stupid and left. And the joke of it is, is I remember this player, they're about mid to low range DPS, so make of that what you will. But with all that in mind, with all that in mind, imperfections threaten that image. That image of how awesome of a player that somebody is, the image that somebody can do no wrong, the image of how useful that person is. It's a reminder that they're human. In this sense, it's the ignorant wanting to stay ignorant. They want to maintain this concept that they're the best, no matter what the truth of the matter really is. And when you have literally everything else telling you how great you are except for the final numbers, seeing those low final numbers can be a real blow to your psyche. In the case of win quitters, they leave because it's better than owning up to the mistake. Blame someone else for it, leave the game so they can't argue the fact, rack up and try again and find another group who's going to reinforce how awesome you actually are. When you put it into perspective like that, it's actually kind of sad. And I don't mean that in the insult way, but in the literal sense. It's sad that people want the illusion of greatness rather than the knowledge to make themselves great. Knowledge is a burden, and not everyone wants it. I'll be damned if that doesn't sound conceited as all hell, but that's honestly how I feel about all this. And short of invoking the drinking game, I don't want to get into why. Thank you for watching. If you really liked the episode, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and leave a comment down there, because that helps me out quite a lot. And if you really like the show, you can subscribe. It's absolutely free. And if you really, really like the show, you can support us on Patreon. Have a good one. Hey everybody, just a quick explanation at the end. I know that normally I put like something kind of funny like at the end, but this time I wanted to explain myself. The reason the episode this week is so short is because two weeks ago I whooped my own tail. I did an event called the Ride Across Wisconsin. It was a 178 mile bike ride in one day. Yeah, it kind of whooped me. If you want to see the entire video of the Sufferfest, you can go up into the cards right now and you can click on and watch the entire video. Or what follows is sort of the highlight reel of the one day event. It took me 14 hours to ride that far. It was quite the event. Anyhow, enjoy the music video, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting stronger, step by step. The clock is ticking, but there's no time for me.
show anything I've been flying from town to town Trying to protect your soul